Across to the mainland. Across the highest altitude line in the country. That old line was treacherous at best, but when Henry was put on there, in the middle of winter, it was a death trap. In 1970, fish had started being delivered by road to the mainland. It was safer and more cost-effective, and the line was declared redundant and unnecessary. It came as a shock to the islanders when it was reopened. That fat shite always hated Henry. He didn't like his cheerful manner, and he clearly had other... Lifestyle choices when he was a human. Fat wanted Henry away from the other engines. And Kipper Run was a night of February the 8th, 1983. Henry had only been on the Kipper Run for a week. The following incident would be made into a book and later recreated in the television series. This is the train the railwaymen call the Flying Kipper. Can you believe they put it in a kid's story? Of course, that fat could change quite a few of their facts. They couldn't know the points from the main line to a siding were frozen, and the home signal should have been set at danger, but snow had forced it down. As the train approached the most treacherous part of the line, unnoticed to Henry, his driver and fireman, that the points had diverted them to the adjoining siding and right into the path of another train. Henry's driver and fireman had jumped clear before the crash. In fact, Al and Barry died from their injuries. Slowly, in snow, the poor bastards. By midday, the recovery operation was underway and Sir Topham Hatt had arrived. Cheer up, Henry, it wasn't your fault. Ice and snow caused the accident. These images from a train spotter's camera were taken the evening before and were successfully covered up by the Sodor Railway Board for 10 years. There was a railway spike in points, blocking them. Of course, that had disappeared by the time we got there. I'm sending you to Crew, a fine place for sick engines. Crew, we all knew what that meant. They'll give you a new shape and a larger firebox. Crew was, at the time, one of only two scrap metal yards in the UK capable of handling and recycling organic material as well as engine parts. You'll feel a different engine and won't need special coal anymore. With those few words, it sentenced Henry to death. Won't that be nice? Yes, sir, said Henry doubtfully. Everyone knew we won't see him again. And everything was sewn up nice and neat for that fat f As news got out about Henry's accident, it didn't take long for Thomas to realise Henry had been disposed of because of what he... The next evening, Thomas had been put on his own for the night at Knapford Station. As his driver and fireman left, under what was left of his own steam, he set off for the Sodor Research Complex. He had a small amount of burning fuel in his firebox, but he was mostly moving under his own strength. It took Thomas three hours to get to the complex. The efforts to get there at midnight. With no one around, he made his way to the shed where he was created. What he found was the answers to his questions and many others. Since Sodar research had become producing biofuels vehicles, the world had asked, why had the first biofusion operation worked so well? But nearly every operation since had failed. Sadly, Thomas found the reasons inside. Thomas had never been the first operation. He hadn't even been second. What shed number 17 contained was evidence of several attempts to create a tank engine with Thomas's DNA. These had been early tests made by people with no experience of an experiment on this scale. Ill-planned and unprepared.
prepared, these procedures had used DNA from the human Thomas and had been as much the real Thomas as the tank engine the world had come to know and love. To us, Thomas the tank engine had been the Thomas we all knew as a boy. Part of the family the whole island's population had known and respected since Wilhelm first arrived. In actuality, this tank engine was no more the real Thomas than all the failed creations made over the 12 months before. This Thomas had all the human Thomas's memories and experiences. He had learned what Thomas had learned, known who Thomas had known, but so had all the previous failures. Wilhelm and Hans Goetze had had to learn through trial and error how to bring their Thomas back from the dead. The following experiments had not had the same work put into them, resulting in the freak engines and aircraft that had developed so many problems on Sodor Island and around the world. In Shed 17, Thomas wouldn't discover who he was, but in fact, who he wasn't. Just really useful. 